Hi there. Let me take a few minutes to clarify some of the ideas here in your next practice question for our test regarding significance testing. This involves a test for proportions. If you have not taken the time to do so already, please stop and read this paragraph here which details the beginning of this question. This is question number five from the uh, 2012 AP Statistics exam, the mock exam that we took. So please inspect this beginning paragraph and then make sure you've read parts A, B, and C and I'll do my best to do a little clarifying for you. So notice we already have a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So the first thing we need to write about is what a type 2 error would look like in the context of the study and then also describe what a consequence of making this error type would look like. So something to think about what a type 2 error is. So this means type 2. You don't reject the null hypothesis when you should. You don't reject the null hypothesis when you should. So to write about what this means in context, so that's the first thing you need to do, write about what it means in context. That means you need to write about what happens if you don't reject the null hypothesis. So not rejecting this null hypothesis, then if you were writing about a statistics test, then we would write about the alternative. If we don't reject the null hypothesis, then what does that tell us that we essentially believe we, had, we know about the alternative. That's what you should write about here. So next, the next part of the question in terms of the consequence. So there's a difference between writing about what the type 2 error means in context and what the consequence then of making that error is. Based on what you've written here, you can describe the consequence, and the consequence goes back to the question itself. Remember, the recreation department is trying to provide convincing evidence that the report is true. The report stating that less than 35% of adult residents in the city can pass a physical fitness test. They're looking to convince the city council to fund more fitness programs. So, if a type 2 error has occurred, how convincing will the evidence be and how well will they be able to argue for the city council that they need this additional funding. So part B, this is a little bit unusual because in part B notice the recreation department recruits 185 adult residents. They volunteer to take the physical fitness test. It's passed by 77 out of 185 volunteers. So that's a little bit over 40% of the volunteers. So it results in a p-value of 0.97 for this hypothesis up here. So if it was reasonable to conduct this test of significance, so what they are saying here is assume that the conditions are met for these 185 volunteers, what would that p-value of 0.97 lead you to conclude? So something to think about. Let's draw a picture of what's actually going on here. So understand a significance test and specifically a p-value is calculated by assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So we're assuming that in the middle of the normal distribution we have the 0.35. Well understand the sample value that we saw was well above 0.35. We'll put it over here let's say. This was the sample p hat that we saw. That's the 77 out of 185. Now understand, assuming the null hypothesis is true, I want to find the likelihood of a value this or more extreme in the direction of the alternative. Remember what the alternative hypothesis stated. It's a less than alternative hypothesis. So when you calculate the p-value, you are interested in a result as or more extreme than this one. So as or more extreme means a result here or below this value. So notice you are shading a great deal, if not almost all, of this normal distribution, assuming that the truth is here, assuming that the 0.35 is right here in the middle. That's 
the null hypothesis assumption. So it shouldn't be a surprise that we're getting such a big p-value. We're just not used to questions where we have such large p-values. So now, from this point onward, because that p-value is so big, you're going to interpret this test as you would interpret any other test. So you want to compare your p-value to the stated level of significance. Here it is. You need to decide whether or not you can reject the null hypothesis, and then you need to describe whether or not you have evidence towards the alternative and you need to write about it in context you need to write about it considering what the parameter P represents so lastly then in part C describe the primary flaw in the study described in part B and explain why it is a concern so that primary flaw remember we were talking about something in class today we were reviewing an important idea in class today when a study or if you will an experiment is designed the most important characteristics of that experiment you want to make sure that your experiment has control you need randomization and you need replication. So, the problem in this study, as it was described, as they said in Part B, the problem in this study has to do with one of those three aspects, and if you read this carefully, if you read Part B really carefully, you will see a word there that should jump out at you, which will indicate what the primary flaw is. You don't have to write a lot to explain the problem. And then you need to explain why it's a concern because it might be explaining, it might at least help to explain the sample statistic. It might help to explain why you are getting this sample proportion here. It might give you a good idea of why that may be the case. And that's what you would want to describe when you are trying to explain why it's a concern. Again, you don't have to write a book here. A couple sentences describing the flaw, a couple sentences explaining why it's a concern. That's more than enough to answer this question successfully. Hope this has been helpful.